Uh, I'm Rashina Fountain. I'm a writer. Um, I'm a mother. Um, I'm going to be a first time author in a couple months or a month or so. Um, and this is my vlog. Um, I feel like a lot of people are curious about my life, whether they want to admit it or not. Um, and um, that's not me being from a kind of um, narcissist type of point of view, but more uh, I get a lot of questions. I get a lot of assumptions. Um, I get a lot of narratives thrown at me um, about um, my life as a single mother and my life as a person who's pursuing a PhD and what my life looks like. I feel like um, a lot of people come up to me and they're like, oh no, 911 emergency. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Me and my daughter are just uh, talking crap, playing video games or, or something. And I think that um, a lot of people tend to fictionalize, fictionalize single mothers' lives. Um, and so um, I'm not one to share my business in general. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I feel like I do have some kind of responsibility in being in countering those narratives or even, um, you know, dispelling some of those. And so uh, this is my blog. It's mostly um, to kind of document my life as I like head into the season of um, realizing one of my one of my childhood dreams and that's to become an author. And so, um, yeah, I'll take you behind the scenes, uh, let you see a little bit of what goes along or what it goes into. Uh, keeping this ship afloat um it's it's not for the faint of heart um but i wouldn't trade it for the world all right thanks for checking it out what up y'all um welcome to my mornings and this is a big privilege because i am probably on the scale of uh loners i'm i'm pretty far to the learners tip towards the learner scale and my mornings super important um i'm a creature of habit um, I like to keep it routine over here, um, and so is my daughter as well. So, um, mornings. Uh, one thing that I've been doing for, I want to say maybe four or five years now, um, the pandemic has, like, blurred time. So, I'm like, I don't know, could be for a decade, but I think around, um, yeah, four years is I make a smoothie, um, and so... Um, blueberry smoothies are like one of my philosophy be behind like eating massive amounts of like blueberries is, I don't know, the bears eat them, um, a lot. <laughs> I feel like they have, they have to have energy, uh, right. To be able to, um, be such a, a big predator, you know? Um, so yeah, so blueberry smoothie, I'll tell you what I put in it. Um, and I do this daily. Um, my daughter has come to hate that little glass of blueberry juice that, um, I put in, try to give her, um, she finds ways to forget, um, <laughs> drinking them quite often. But, but yeah, what do I put in it? I put, um, blueberries, my favorite blueberries. I've tried so many amounts, uh, so many types of blueberries since I've started doing this. Um, my favorite are like wild blueberries and like, they're like the smaller, um, blueberries uh and uh, i don't know they just feel sweeter um i think they're called wild yeah wild blueberries they have better um a, a taste that i like i don't want to say better um but the ones that i've been getting uh recently are from um a local store chain i try to uh, one of the things i try to do is shop locally as much as i can um i definitely go to other stores no cat <laughs> like to get other things but the bulk of my my shopping I try to do when I'm doing grocery shopping is to try to find like a local market. Um, the local market that I go to um, has like partnerships with local um, farmers and things like that. And so this one, it's an Oregon blueberry, um, semi-local Pacific Northwest. Um, and um, this one isn't a wild blueberry, but it's, a, it's from Oregon. All right, anyway, enough on blueberries. I could talk all day about it. Um, but yeah, so I put some blueberries. Um, I use some yogurt. Um, I am not a fan of Greek yogurt. I've tried to um, eat that. I think it skipped a generation because my daughter doesn't like to, to eat Greek yogurt either. Um, but yeah, just some, some um, low-fat vanilla yogurt in it um, and uh, vanilla bean, I believe. Um, and then I put some kale. I eat so much kale. Um, it's a superfood. Uh, I feel like we need them in these times. Um, and I am not a food expert, but this is, again, um, just things that I do. Um, and then I'll put 
I've on this like blood orange kick. Um, I didn't grow up knowing that there was like a diversity of oranges uh, that you could eat. Um, so I wasn't a big fan of oranges until I like understood there is not just one orange um, and one orange that I'm digging um, again from my local um, food market is uh, yeah blood oranges they're so good so yeah so I put that in there uh, put it in a blender um, I sometimes vary the fruit but most consistently is orange and kale and blueberries um, I feel like I am at a point where it's starting to taste um, it's good, but it's starting to be a little redundant. So if you have any ideas for smoothies, that'd be dope. Um, but yeah, so this is the first thing I do is drink this this uh, wonderful smoothie. And another thing about me is that you won't catch me just like eating fruit. Um, I'm more of a veggie person. Um, I'm not, I don't really have that much of a sweet tooth. I'm more like salty chips and all that stuff um, that I, I shouldn't eat as much. But like if you... Um, like I'll be eating a veggie over fruit. So actually like I have to like make myself do this every day um, It's not because I'm, I enjoy eating sweet things. Our mug. R stands for Rashina um, Yeah, coffee. I drink coffee. I, I like coffee. I may have been drinking coffee since I was really young um, I don't know if y'all have grandparents like mine wonderful grandparents right so don't don't hate don't try to judge our grandparents for what they did they loved us um but you know my grandparents drank coffee in the mornings they get up around five in the morning um even if you're not a mor morning riser or like early riser like we all loved walking into that kitchen with my grandma and granddad drinking coffee together um having conversations it was always a a welcome a peaceful um time um, and, and then they would slip us some coffee. So, um, you know, heavily like watered down. Um, but yeah, you know, you felt lucky to, to be able to share that time and, um, you know, space with your grandparents, at least mine. I, you know, I was, my grandparents helped raise me, um, and helped raise many of me and my cousins. Um, and so, yeah, so coffee. Um, so yeah, I like it. Uh, I'm a big fan. Um, not just cause I live in Seattle. Um, it just so happens that I live in Seattle, a place known for coffee uh, that has a lot of good coffee. Um, but yeah, coffee for me uh, in the mornings, yeah, it's it's it, it's a form of remembrance. Like it reminds me of my grandparents, um, and even just that first sip um, of coffee um, takes me there. And so, so yeah, coffee is definitely part of my morning routine. But what do I have going on? What do I have going on? Um, I'm like one of those people, people are like, hey, how you doing? I'm like, good. Um, because I feel like it's more of like a greeting. I'm not gonna be like, well, I have this, I have this, I have this going on. And so I think that like my presence, sometimes I can be like, oh, good, you know, not much, you know? <laughs> Meanwhile, I always have a lot going on. Um, do I feel like I'm in the space where I want to like always like this is what I have going on I don't think that that's my personality I think more of my personality is just like um, kind of level kind of uh, calm even if I'm feeling um, a different way on the inside um, and so yeah so that so and I don't know if it's a Midwest thing I don't know it could be um, but but typically you know if you say Hey, Regina, how's it going? I'm like, oh, it's good. <laughs> yeah, that I mean, I, I don't have a lot of deadlines. And so, um, so one of the things, so what do I have going on? So I have, I'm finishing up, um, finalizing uh, some things for the book, right? Um, that's, um, you know, uh, going to be delivered to you all very soon. Um, I um, have about three episodes or so four episodes on deck for sustaining for us so those episodes are pretty much done um uh some i've sent to the people who are you know i'm working with um and uh so yeah so those episodes so i'm finalizing that i'll be releasing three of those next week um so i have the intro episode that involves um, me kind of introducing the project um it kind of follows me in my life a bit um 
and then the the other two episodes are uh, with wonderful artists that I've interviewed um, and um, those will be coming up soon <clears throat> and I've been working on that project for a bit um, some of the delays in having it delivered um, were there were some things happening with the financial side that I had to um, like that it's funded but like getting the money and delivering it and doing all the stuff there were some delays in that but also <laughs> Um, so personal delays, like I've been, um, you know, uh, I have had a lot of things going on that I've had to kind of, um, that has taken away focus from my work. And so I'm finally in a stage where I can begin to, um, uh, really do this project, um, justice. Uh, some of the editing is vulnerability, right? So there's a vulnerable space that I'm allowing myself to be in as I engage in this project. There's a lot of writing as you hear it, you'll understand, and maybe I'll show you some of that uh, later, um, that I've actually written quite a bit in response to um, these artists' work. Um, so I'm trying to be in conversation. And so, you know, um, if I'm not allowed to be in that space, if I'm not in that space, it's kind of, um, it was really difficult um, to, to engage with the work. And so I won't go into too much of what I had going on, but um, I finally had a stage that I can um, immerse myself into that work and uh, I really want to do it justice. Um, and uh, yeah, so be looking out for for that, uh, sustaining for us. Um, yeah, and so um, I'll backtrack a little bit, but yeah, it's a project that I worked on as a Barclay um, scholar uh, for the Simpson Center um, at the University of Washington and I got some funding for it. Um, and it involves um, looking at queer, queer of color, uh, black people um, and thinking about um, asking them what's sustaining them, right? Within this climate uh, of many threats, right? And so um, so that's, that's one project um, that I have going on and that I'm super excited about. Um, another project uh, is um, multi-layered, um, and so I'm I'm working on this project um, that stems from some work uh, that I did called Drop Down Blues, um, and so that is a conservation environmental project um, that involves blues um, and some speculative fiction and poetry. Um, in it. And so uh, that project I started, um, shoot, uh, a year and a half ago or two years ago. And a lot of it was the gathering the information, doing field um, research, um, going out and doing some performance at the site. Um, and so by performance, like, um, yeah, some solo performing um, at this creek uh, in Seattle. Um, and there's a lot more. I don't want to this to be like super work focused, but, um, but yeah, so part of that is going to be offered, um, as an art installation, right? And so I'm working on some audio and video, um, for that. And, um, the culmination of it, all that work that I've done for Drop Down Blues is, is a film, is a short film, um, that, has has some musicality that has some conservation that has some poetry some some fiction right um and so that's one of the projects that I'm working on but right now I'm I'm preparing um for part of that to be a part of this art installation um what else so the book um my exams and so I'm in um exams and so my exams may not uh you know what it looks like for me to be in exams uh, may look a little different. Um, I'm, I'm a person that, uh, I do not perform student. Um, and so what does that mean by perform student? Um, I have, uh, you know, I've had perfect grades for pretty much the whole time I've been in grad school. Um, and done a lot of, a lot of things, but, um, you're not going to catch me being, you know, performing that, uh, self-degrading, like, oh, I'm, uh, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do, uh, or, um, you're not going to catch me, um, you know, speaking in the ways that, um, you know, maybe the norm is to, to speak, um, 
So that doesn't negate 3 a.m. mornings. That doesn't negate uh, me spending couple, couple, like so much time uh, in front of books, in front of the screen. Um, but yeah, so my exams, um, I'm working on those right now. Uh, and um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited about that. That's a, a different process, a different genre of, of writing and communicating. Uh, but yeah, so my PhD exams is something I'm also working on for those that are lurking, being like, Rashina ain't, ain't focusing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, it takes a, you know, anyway, so yeah, so there is that. And then there's parenting. Um, and, uh, that's a part of my life that I'm very protective over. Um, and, and very, um, don't like to engage in people's in narratives or, or what that is, um. But it's there. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, faith is in uh, a hard year, right? Junior year. Y'all remember junior year? I don't. <laughs> but, but maybe there's a reason why we don't remember junior year. Junior year um, is an important year, per se, right? And so so one of the things is supporting her through that. Um, also being a voice of reason uh, in these uh, systems that likes to say that you have to have everything figured out your junior year. This is important, your college. And it's like, yeah, that's true, right? Um, but, you know, there's some things that, um, as we do, all do as parents, that you want to um, counter. Maybe some of the things I grew up. I wish I had more time to really hone in on, like, what I wanted to do in terms of just exploring, right? So undergrad can be a time of finding that thing that really captures you i don't know if high school you have to have it all figured out right um and just trying to um you know help her have that balance um and expectations that um it's okay not to know it's okay to not be perfect what are you learning from your mistakes right um it's okay um to not have it figured out maybe you're a homie your friend um has uh they know what they're gonna do in that and you know and that makes you feel a certain certain type of way no you know i think that's what college is for that's what this next step is for and so you know um yeah finding that thing that you don't you don't mind doing right and leaning into that and that's something i try to tell her so well that's the psychology she's into psychology and i'm like lean into it if that's something that's giving you energy maybe that's a route to finding what you want to do or film she's really into film so um maybe that's something that she she really wants to do and that's something that we do we watch films we watch independent films we talk about them all the time um and it was really cool uh hearing her you know tell her teacher that uh yeah me and my mom already do this <laughs> you know her film she's in a, um, a college film course this this quarter uh so yeah um so there's that um and that's a big part of my life I think you know one of the people like people ask you know that's another thing of performance right and so um, I'm very aware of um, social media and always like I don't feel like I need to document I document I take hella pictures I don't know any parents who don't take pictures but I don't know if I need to share all that right um, all those experiences I think um, as she gets older, um, those moments off camera, those moments like not having to share, I don't know, that's selfish to me. Like, you know, like I, I want to have those selfish moments, like those moments are, are, are important to me. Um, and they're not, uh, I don't care about Sean, you know, he was performing parent either. Right. Um, so, so yeah, so it's a, it's an important year, um, and my biggest role outside of everything that I'm doing, um, any obligation is to that, right? To supporting her, um, to uh, make sh making sure uh, that I can be some kind of balance, and, you know, as she pursues um, what she wants to pursue, as she takes on this heavy load that she's taking on in junior year. Um, and uh, yeah, that's my homie. That's who I hang out with most. That's who I have conversations with. Uh, I don't know if that's like a single mom thing that, you know, one of the things that people don't talk about is how close we are, you know, to to our, our children. And um, uh, 
one of the cool I'm um, always like you know I'm I'm a big entertainment person um, and that's just is what it is um, maybe that's why I'm studying literature and culture but like I'm very into like you know uh, things I'm into sports uh, but yeah um, Jason Tatum's mom right she tells a story about uh, him uh, coming home from school um, she was a single mom uh, and him the teacher asking him what he wants to be um, and uh, he's like professional basketball player and then the teacher like laughs and things like that and you know she went off <laughs> you know on that teacher rightfully so and guess what Jason Tatum is a professional basketball player um, and you know from sing mom and so that does not negate you know other other aspects or other roles in, in, in our children's lives but but yeah, I love I love hearing um, stories, uplifting stories, uh, encounter narratives to often what I encounter. Um, and uh, yeah, um, I'll leave it at that. Um, but yeah, so so that's that's some of the things I have going on. That's what keeps my attention. Um, I am a homebody. Um, I think more so than ever. I mean, if you are someone who has had to be as busy as I've had to be, um, had to balance what I've had to balance, you know, part of my professional life, I had to travel, uh, weekly. Um, and what did that mean? Travel out of the state and things like that. And as now, like having the schedule that I have, um, I try to utilize all my time, right. And utilizing all my time is leaving that space to have some kind of joy throughout the day. And that joy often involves my parent parenthood right and doesn't leave a lot of room um but yeah so even the fact that i have been able to um choose work um that is conscious right i try to choose work um contri that contributes something to society um that has taken sacrifice right um and so whether that's sacrifice uh in um pay cuts uh whether that's sacrifice and whatever um, you know, the life that I, I have lived, the life that I live with my daughter, um, is incredibly intentional. Um, and it is meant to include that space to support her, um, to include that space that I'm, um, yeah, carving out space and making time for her. Um, and so, so yeah, so, so yeah, so I think, um, that's, that's, I guess like that's one thing that's on my mind because I'm talking about it. Um, but yeah, I am, um, yeah, it's, it's a busy time for both of us. Um, and, um, as we're planning, she's planning for college. Um, I am, you know, moving along in my PhD program. I am moving along in my writing career. I'm moving along in my development as an artist overall. Um, and so it's, it's a, it's an intentional time. Um, I am in the process of rebuilding community, uh, and figuring out what that was. And so that's one thing that I want to talk about, like sustaining for us was in that rebuilding, like me, uh, losing community or me choosing to, uh, redevelop like my idea of like what community is. And so, um, so yeah, so that process and, uh, I'm still in that process. Um, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's an interesting time in general. Um, you know, uh, I haven't felt the same, you know, uh, or, you know, everything that's going on in terms of the genocide in Palestine. Um, that is underneath there. That is um, something I'm always thinking about, something I always like in the forefront, right? And so I don't know if a lot of people know, but like a lot of my work uh, has centered around uh, gun violence or the first piece that I wrote um, nationally was a piece that I sent to Ariana Huffington. Um, and she actually answered the email and um, it, it was a piece about um, gun violence um, in Chicago and just like how that is, that growing up um, in violence uh, or growing up being affected by violence, not in violence, because my community was multiple, you know, there's a lot of multiplicity, right, happening, things happening at the same time. And I think that that's 
um, how a lot of us have um, grown up. Um, and so, yeah, so my first piece uh, was about that. And, and for a long time, that's all I wrote about. Um, and in healing and things like that, um, and having to do some own self-healing the, over the past few years, I don't always center my work there. Um, I've been leaning into hope, uh, trying to lean into hope, trying to lean into imagination, not without um, addressing or um, still um, addressing some of those issues that we have going on uh, in society. Um, so I'm always thinking about it. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm posting music, maybe I'm doing other things, but um, it, hit, it hits home, right? It hits home. <laughs> on um sustaining for us uh my studio space is in shambles half of my equipment is in another room um because i've been using another room to do more of like my guitar playing and kind of practicing with with my looper and things like that um because this space is more to do like editing um and audio production um and it's a very small space so there's not a lot of room to move around with my guitar so um yeah, everything's in shambles. Um, but yeah, this is this is my room where I do a lot of my work. Um, and again, um, so what I'm doing now is um, there's a, a script that I write uh, for each of the episodes. Um, and so I'm working on uh, one of the scripts I need to voice over. Um, let me show you that. I need to voice over one of the scripts that I wrote for an amazing artist. Um, and so right now I'm gonna do that. I have everything laid out. I have uh, the clips, sound clips, like edited from the interview um, and like the intro and all of that jazz. But now I'm just like um, doing some voiceovers. So output should be headphones. So headphones input is my Yeti microphone. Um, this microphone, it's what I use, um, but I have other microphones as well. Um, testing, testing. Right, it should be good. Um, so I use a combination of programs. Um, so I have, um, been using for a very long time. Um, it's called Reason. Um, it's a program that I use to make a lot of like music and beats and I do some voice recording in that. And typically I'll run the program after I've like edited it. I use Audacity, which is a free program. Um, I use some of that, but um, on my other computer, I also have Adobe Audition, um, which is, is pretty standard. Um, when I was interning uh, for a month, not many people know this, but yeah, I interned for a month uh, for an NPR uh, affiliated radio station. Um, it's the job that I regret the most leaving, but I had to, um, as a mother, I had to take this full-time work and my, my, my um, internship at the time was unpaid. Um, so unfortunately I had to leave it, but yeah, I, I think the, the place, um, the radio station that I interned at used Adobe Audition and I'll be using that a lot for my Drop Down Blues pro um, project. Uh, but right now my files are in Audacity and then later on um, I'll do some work in, um, in in this program called Reason, which is which, which is a paid program. Okay, I need to get my notes. Do, 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 skip, skip to my notes, skip. Oh, one thing that happened to me, I don't know if you can see my computer screen, but my computer screen looks crazy. I don't know if y'all have, um, other Mac users, um, have dealt with like the screen breaking quite a bit. Um, I have a warranty. Um, I need to take it in, but I've been like afraid to take it in because I've had so many like deadlines. So when I get past this next deadline, I'll 
take my computer in to get fixed. Um, okay, so I set my separate files in my separate files. The script for Amori. I'll do a couple takes of it. Um, should probably turn off these lights. I don't know if it's going to get super dark in here. Um, we'll see. We'll see if it picks up on the sound. So, yeah, I'll turn off this light. Bluetooth. Oh no, no Bluetooth. Bluetooth. Bye. All right. So now it just got a lot darker in here, but um, it's better. Maybe I'll turn on this light. This handy dandy. One of the the lights I use in this room too is a, a sun lamp. If you're not from Seattle, or if you don't spend time in Seattle, you may not really know the awesomeness, the reason why we have these, but um, they get us through, they get us through. Uh, and sometimes it'd be too bright, I don't like a little bit of it. Okay, so I have this, have the tracks laid out already. So what I want to do is record. Oops. New track. Add a new mono track. Gonna mute everything else. Let's do this voice recorder. Test it. Testing, 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 testing. Hey. Testing, 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 one, two, three. Hello. Hello. This is Rashina Fountain. All right, this should be good. I can always turn it up. Let me mute that track. Um, the intro track for, um, I actually like played on guitar and uh, produced and added some instruments to it. So the intro for Sustaining For Us. Um, I made that as well. Um, okay, so let me record. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Google Chrome, where you be? On this episode of Sustaining for Us, I find myself in Pioneer Square, Seattle's oldest neighborhood, just blocks away from the Salish Sea in beautiful waterfront. I'm here at Cosmo Pioneer Square for the House of Key League presents Tropical Tantrum. Seattle's own Amori is set to perform. I first heard Amori perform at Justine Chan's book release, though I had heard of Amy Pignon's documentary work in, about nonprofits. Ooh, I messed up. I gotta do it again. Gotta do it again. Gotta do it again. Okay. Take two. Okay. 
On this episode of Sustaining For Us, I find myself in Pioneer Square, Seattle's oldest neighborhood just blocks away from the Sailor Sea and beautiful waterfront. I'm here at Cosmo Pioneer Square for the House of Key League presents Tropical Tantrum. Seattle's own Amori is set to perform. I first heard Amori perform at Justine Chan's book release, though I had heard of Amy Pignon's Pignon's, Pignon's, Pignon's. Take 95. On this episode, take 95, take, take 205. On this episode of Sustaining for Us, I find myself in Pioneer Square, Seattle's oldest neighborhood, just blocks away from the Sailor Sea and beautiful waterfront. I'm here at Cosmo Pioneer Square for the House of Key League presents Tropical Tantrum. Seattle's own Amori is set to perform. I first heard Amori perform at Justine Chan's book release, though I heard of Amy Pignon's documentary work about nonprofits. Amori's song, Be Changed, spoke to me, the articulation of hope, of possibility, of belief. Amori's voice has a disarming quality, an ability to hit multiple registers and awaking feeling. The feelings are a complex mixture. I can feel an urge toward healing from inside, a welcome to be, an invitation to breathe, to relax my shoulders a little. To lay down the burden in Amori's resonating messages on such a beautiful sonic landscape. Again, Amori's voice is beautiful, but I'm also interested in the storytelling and visions Amori expresses in her work and what sustains her in her artist practice account across many mediums and spaces. Before the performance at House of Key League event, I had a chance to speak to Amori at the Danny Wu Garden in Seattle's Chinatown International District. We talk about ancestral memories, pottery, songwriting, youth education, recovering from nonprofit work, and a local nonprofit restoring her hope. We talk about Amori's road to finding balance and in her art, personal, and work life. I need to do that again, but you get the gist, so I'm going to add that on. The food is ready. You think Illinois going to win? You did? You think Illinois going to win? Wait, are you shaking your head? <laughs> why are you not saying you, Why didn't you say that out loud? So you don't think Illinois going to win? Ooh. That's messed up. I am not going to say what I feel. No, don't say. I think they said that um, Illinois hasn't um like they like the way they're scoring is close to like how they did it in the 1980s so then they said that but they said that like iowa state's defense is good so it's a chance it's a chance you know but i won't say what i did on my bracket ill all the way that's my school right that was under duress I had them in the finals, and then you were like, you put Illinois in the final? You really did. You lied. You were lying. Mm. I'm about to watch this Illinois game. Wait, you need Arizona to win? Mm. Oh dang! Arizona was a final four. Oh dang! Dang! That is Michigan. I am. Look at him. I'm number um 760 in one of my um groups. It's like out of thousands of people. I think that's pretty good. Better than last year. Last year was crazy. Yeah, I was better than last year. I am better than last year. Women, we didn't really... I didn't put a lot of... 
Like we didn't we didn't do it until after the the deadline, I think. I'm your overly competitive brother. I'm ready for a rematch. Game on. I've been practicing. What's the cello? Y'all know the hoop. Y'all know. Don't let me down. I ain't putting no salt on that no. Life changing education opportunities are just the start. The NCAA is providing enhanced mental health services with guaranteeing scholarships and tuition and expanding access to health care. Visit NCAA.org slash change. Casa Tacos. Just eating rice. Glad I get credit card followers from Navy Federal Credit Union. Can't imagine where I'd be without them. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah, I was afraid that was Okay, that's nice. Running in the rain ain't no fun. We have the best Ain't no fun. And it was easy with the points we got for the flagship card from Navy Federal Credit Union. Heard talk us. Good. What kind of taco meat is it? Look at all this fish. It is bison. <laughs> it's hilarious. Hilarious bison tacos. That's where is that?